everyone, it's John from Seattle Coffee Gear. I'm here today with a crew review of the Silvia Pro from Ranchilio. This is a pretty highly anticipated machine. Um, we did the sneak peek just a little bit ago, so we're going to go in depth with it today. We are going to have more videos on crew comparisons um, and probably like a, a more in-depth look on this machine as well. So keep an eye out for those videos, but let's talk about it. What is the Silvia Pro? This is the updated version of the original Silvio, which had been out for a long time, like 20 years or so, and hadn't had really any major design updates to it. It kind of tweaked some stuff over time, but this is the first like truly new home model from Ranchilio since the original Silvia. Um, it does look very similar to the original Silvia. Um, some people have said it kind of looks like just the original Silvia, but like zoomed in. It does have a PID controller now integrated. There's a PID control on the brew boiler and the steam boiler, which is pretty great. Um, on the Sylvia, you either had to have us or another company install the PID for you, or you could do it on your own and risk warranty issues. But it's pretty great that it's now built into the machine and it's on the brew and steam boiler. So that's pretty cool. The biggest perk of it being a dual boiler is you don't have to switch back and forth from brewing and steaming, which is pretty nice, especially if you are you know, waking up in the morning, it cuts your drink prep time by quite a bit because you don't have to wait for the one boiler to come up to the temp for steaming and then drop back down. And I know some people are just espresso heads, they just drink espresso. So if that's you, you could probably still get away with the original Sylvia, but if you wanna have a little bit more usability, having that second boiler for steam is super helpful. You can turn the steam boiler off, so it just effectively becomes a single boiler machine. Um, if you see that this light is out, that means the steam boiler is off. I've noticed that the temperature stability is a little bit better with the steam boiler off. I think that has to do with the power management because in the US, this is a 110 machine. So we are dealing with some limited power, especially if you have both boilers on, it's splitting that power between both boilers. And so it takes a little bit longer for your temperatures to recover. It can take a little bit longer for the machine as a whole to heat up if you have both boilers on, I've noticed. Um, there is quite a bit of case material, so your warm-up times are still pretty long. You probably want to let it rest for 20 minutes after you turn it on. But I'm backed off that tangent. You do have the ability to turn your steam boiler off or on. Um, if the steam boiler is um, on and you turn the machine off, if I turn it back on, it will remember that the steam boiler was on. So that's handy. Some machines, if they have a separate control for that steam boiler and it's a toggle switch like this, you'll have to turn the machine on and then also turn that second boiler on. I like that it remembers that the boiler was on so you really only have one switch. Um, obviously there's other dual boiler machines on the market in a similar price point as this, but I think they did a pretty good job with adding in some extra features in this little uh, PID here. So it does function as a shot timer as well. So it'll remember that for a little bit it flashes and then goes back to displaying your temperature. I have this set to Celsius right now instead of Fahrenheit. That's why it's reading at 94. Um, and then if you want to change your brew temperature up or down, it's pretty easy. Um, you just press those and then the brew switch acts as basically your okay to actually lock in that brew temperature. If you just push it up or down, um, it won't automatically set. You have to hit the brew switch as your okay. To get into a deeper level of programming, super simple. You just hold the plus and the minus buttons and then as soon as it reads T2, you're into that deeper programming menu. And in here, you can adjust your steam boiler temp. So that's the T2. It has kind of a limited range, but you don't really need that much flexibility. And um, the steam on this is pretty good as you'll see later on. Um, you also have the ability to do kind of a limited auto on function. Think about that more like, um, 
Like my parents, when I was a kid, they'd always set their coffee maker the night before, so it would brew a pot in the morning. It's kind of like that. So if you are finishing your daily cup and you're gonna power the machine off, what you can do is set it to come on in a certain number of hours. So you do have to set the auto on pretty much each day. So it's not like a scheduled auto on like on the new Rocket R58, the Cinquantoto, or some of the Breville machines that have a little bit better programming where you can set like an auto on schedule. But it is still nice to have that. If you have a morning where you know you're gonna be getting up super early, you can set it so it comes on like a half hour or an hour before you wake up. So it's fully warmed up. All you have to do is roll out of bed, grind some coffee and brew. So that's pretty nice. Um, it does also has kind of in combo with that, it has some auto off functionality and you can set that in like half an hour increments. So if you want it to stay on for a half an hour after you turn it on or 60 minutes after you turn it on, I had it set to 60 minutes. So then I could wake up, turn it on, you know, go work out or something while we're all, we've all been working at home. So I had this at home for a while but I wake up in the morning, turn it on as soon as I got up. And then when I got ready for that first cup, I could come back out and it would be all ready to go, which was super nice um, to have like that 60 minute timer, but you could do more if you didn't want it turning off on its own. So that's pretty nice. It also has an auto back flush, which is super nice. It works the same as the Ranchilio commercial machines where it has the different stages and kind of guides you through it. So it has a stage for when you have the um, cleaning product in there, either Kefiza or the cleaning tablets. Then it has a stage where you take it out, rinse it and put it back in. And it just does a water back flush. So pretty handy. That's not a feature that like the E61 style machines have just because they have that manual lever. So that's a leg up, I'd say on the programming side. There is more programming to it and we'll probably do a specific feature on the programming for this machine, but that's kind of a good understanding of the program then that you'll use, adjusting the temperatures, the auto on, the auto off, and then that auto back flush as well. So overall, I really like it. it does have a uh, sensor in the water tank, which the original Sylvia did not have. So as you can see here, um, it says H2O. That means it either needs water or needs the sensor to be kind of fixed around in the tank. It is a little bit rudimentary, which is kind of frustrating. So if you look back here at this thing right here, this is your sensor for um, whether or not there's water in the tank. Um, and I find it's, found it's a little bit finicky. Um, once you kind of get used to it, you can uh, understand how it works um, and you won't get this error when the tank is full, but it does take some getting used to. Some of the machines like the Rockets have the sensor at the bottom of the tank. So as long as it's full of water or has any water in it, um, it'll sense that. Uh, but the benefit of all the sensors being out the top here is that there's less chance for something to leak because there's no gaps on the bottom of it. So pros and cons, I think I might prefer the style of tank on the rockets just because I like being able to pull it out and put it back in and not have to worry about those tubes, but kind of pros and cons, like I was saying, uh, pick your battles. But I do like that it has that sensor so you don't have to worry about it running out of water and checking that constantly. Nice upgrade from the original Sylvia. Does have a hot water tap as well now. Um, I'll show you that. It does pull from the steam boiler, I believe, because it's pretty hot water. It kind of crackles when it's coming out uh, and it only works when the steam boiler is on. So I probably wouldn't use it for an Americano or tea because that's pretty hot. It's too hot to drink for me. But uh, if you want to use it to rinse a shot glass or something like that, you can. I wouldn't suggest using it for rinsing your portafilter. Just use the group for that. It brings fresh water to it and then also helps to clean out the group a little bit. But um, that's a lot of the, the basic features of it. Why don't we go ahead and make a couple drinks, um, taste them, and you can see it in action. So let's go ahead and make some drinks on the Sylvia Pro. 
The baskets that come in this are the very Italian sized baskets. So you have a single and a double, but they're a little bit smaller than we use in the US. So I think this is rated for like 14 to 16. I'm putting 17 grams in it and I can see a little bit of like an indentation from the screen in my puck after I brew. So I would probably suggest upgrading to some larger baskets. You can fit an 18 gram basket in here. It just wouldn't have like the dip that these Italian style baskets have in it. Um, a little bit more of what we're using and you know, specialty coffee. And you can always get a bottomless porta filter for this and run a triple basket if you wanna do those 20, 21 gram shots. Today we are brewing the Kindred from AKA. It's a little bit lighter and we're grinding on the Specialita from Eureka. Let's see here, 17.4, it's a little heavy. This is the Pearl S from Akaya. Cool, right at 17, let me distribute here. As I'm doing this, it does come with this nice new tamper. It's got a wood handle. Um, it's right at 58 uh, millimeters, so it's not oversized or anything. If you're a coffee nerd, you'll probably be buying a 58.4, 58.5 tamper. Got that. So you can see there with 17 grams in the basket, uh, it is pretty full. So that's why I'd suggest maybe looking at a bigger basket if you're getting this machine. Let me dump this out and we'll brew. So I'm gonna split this drink and make kind of a, a one in one and a cappuccino in that so we can look at the steaming and then an espresso in the other. And I'll do it at the same time because that's kind of the point of this machine. So let me get some milk. Lock it in place. I have this set to 93 degrees Celsius, which is right around 200. But if I'm wrong, I'm American. So don't hate me. All right. I forgot a towel, so I'm just going to double use this. Make sure you purge. This is not an insulated steam one, so it gets pretty hot, be careful. Um, you can grab this just fine. Um, it gets a little bit hot, but you're not gonna burn yourself like you would if you grab the actual steam wand. All right, let's go ahead and pour. A little bit too much milk, so I'm actually gonna dump some of this out. So I got my little cappuccino here. It's a single shot and I waited, so the crema wasn't perfect, but you can see the, the milk is super nicely textured, really good microfoam on that. Um, the steam tip on this is probably one of my favorites. Um, it's the same one as their commercial machines, um, which has the four um, tips in the steam wand, or four holes in the steam wand tip, very similar to like a La Marzocco. So if you are coming from uh, being a barista, working on a commercial machine, this will be really familiar to you. Um, one other benefit of this machine um, is it does have an individual pump for the steam boiler and the brew boiler. So if you're pulling a shot and steaming at the same time and the steam boiler needs to call for water, it's not going to affect the pressure of your shot. So some machines that only have one pump for both tasks, if the steam boiler needs water at the same time as the brew boiler, it'll drop your brew pressure and can ruin your shot and cause some channeling. But because this has two separate vibratory pumps, you don't have to worry about that. The huge ad, not talked about a lot uh, on the machines in a similar price point. So let's go ahead and taste. I pulled this to about 40 grams, so 17 in, 40 out, because it is a little lighter. Now 
Yeah, that's really good. Kind of like a lemon, a little bit of orange peel. Um, I really wish I could dose a little bit higher to get some more, maybe some concentration out of it. But um, with the baskets, that's pretty tasty. Not going to argue about that. Um, let me try this. Yeah, that's really good. Um, the espresso and the milk blend really well together and the, the nice foam on the top just creates a really basically cafe level drink. Um, one thing I would say about this machine is that uh, the shots on it are very consistent. Ranchilio worked really hard on the temperature stability from shot to shot. So they're saying like a degree plus or minus is the, the stability there. Um, and you can definitely taste it. When I had this, had this at home, um, my, my wife Jen was saying that it was some of the best drinks that she's had from the machines I've had at home. And I chalked that up to just the temperature stability compared to some other machines like a, a heat exchanger machine. Even if it has a PID on the boiler, this is gonna outperform that in terms of temperature stability. So pros and cons. Pros, it is um, a very consistent machine from shot to shot. Like I was just saying, every shot is gonna be super consistent. The temperature is very stable, so that's a huge benefit. The steam pressure is super consistent because it has those two separate pumps. Your espresso is gonna be almost identical from shot to shot as long as you're letting it, giving it enough time for the temperature to come back up if your temperature has dropped. Obviously, you wanna have a good grinder paired with it. That's only gonna help. Cons, I would say that it does still have um, kind of the, a little bit of the rattle of a Sylvia. Some Sylvias, just because it is like very kind of minimalistic panels on it, they do tend to rattle a little bit, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, the other thing that's a little bit annoying to me, uh, I'll show you here, is the way the drip tray, it's kind of like a, almost like a baking pan from like a kid's oven or something. Uh, but it is, you can adjust the height of this by moving these two little rails here, which is nice. Uh, but I just keep it at the lowest setting so I can easily fit a scale and cups underneath there. But this is pretty small. Um, when I had it at home, I would like put a bowl underneath it to flush into just because this can be kind of awkward to take out. So that's a con there. Um, and in the looks department, you might like it, you might not. Uh, my wife actually did like it. It got the approval to stay in the kitchen if at some point I wanted to buy it. So I'd say that's a win. Not every machine gets that. I'll put this back on here. Overall, in my opinion, it's a strong contender if you're looking for a good prosumer espresso machine at home. Um, it has the good reliability that the Sylvia is known for. It's gonna last a long time. And at this price point, I'd, I'd say you're hard pressed to find a machine that's gonna be as consistent with your espresso uh, experience and then also gonna last as long. There's other machines that have good temperature stability, but they're gonna kind of wear out faster. There's other machines that will last a really long time and look really nice, but they don't have as consistent of temperatures um, and you know espresso experience as this machine does. But I hope you enjoyed this review. Please take a look at some of our other videos that will be coming out on it. If you have questions on something I didn't cover, leave a link down below or leave a comment down below and I'll jump in there and answer that to the best of my ability. But thank you for watching and hope you have a great rest of the day.